Oh, look at that. We're already on the graphics, though. We've faded out. We've got four people left. It looks like we've got Mangucci. We have got um, Tarolf. We have got Miko. Miko. Thank you. <laughs> and then the last one we just saw then, Michelle, getting into the top four. Jeez. Right. Yeah. We're gonna, I'm going to run off. You know, we're going to end the round. We're gonna, I'm going to run off. I'm going to talk to the players. I'm going to see if we can get the semis back to back for you all. You'll find out very shortly because we'll be back super quickly for you all because people might have lights to catch. So that's it. I, my name is Will. This is uh, Matei. And we'll be back super short for the finals later on. See you soon. Hello everybody, welcome back here for the semi-final in Naples. We are playing for the LAC, the last, fi the final of this tournament and we are in the semi-final of the finals. <laughs> it's tricky, but it's right there. We are 
we can see right now the bracket of the finals. So we have four players remains, and we have Boni, Severin, Roboch, and Mengucci. And who we are going to see for the, our first semifinals? So we are going to feature Mengucci versus Torolf. These are friends. Actually, I have a fun story because the first time I casted a magic event was Red Bull and Tapped, and this event I casted alongside with Mengu and Torolf. They were uh, the other two people casting this event and now I'm here <laughs> casting their semi-final <laughs> and one of them is going to make worlds. I know this yeah. is a dream of both of these players uh, and I am really excited. This is going to be a very bittersweet game here. As we know, Thorolf has been crushing with this Esper Legend deck. This, league, this list is so tuned to be Grixis. Thorolf beat Andres Santos uh, before that was playing Grixis and Mengu is playing Grixis mid-range himself. So. This is going to be a very interesting matchup to watch. Yes, who remains? Right now we have two Asper and two, two Grixis, so it could be a good final. It so will be for sure, even if it's a mirror match, but... Torov starts strong, Danik. I have to say that Menguchi is starting with two Swamps. Um, Usually Grixis plays a lot of non-basic, so mm -hmm. definitely an interesting start here. If Torolf has Len Rafin, that can be a great start here alongside with Danik. Uh, I see though that Mango does have some go for throat that can get rid of Danik. He's attacking. And it, okay. it is the go for yeah. throw. They are kind of <laughs> having a banter. And there we have wedding announcement. Actually, one of the interesting facts of the list that Torolf and some of the other guys like Arne brought is that they are playing for wedding announcement, uh, announcement main. And this card is really good. Mm -hmm. Mango missed land drop. Ooh. I was talking about how um, interesting it was that he played two swamps. But that yeah. is because he does not have a following up. And he does have a lot of removal. We can see that he's going to be able to remove quite a bit of creatures. But Wedding Announcement is kind of the perfect answer mm -hmm. because he's going to make multiple threats. We have exactly. Rafine now and Mango cannot target Rafine because but it will cost one more yeah, but he can the target ward. the token. Oh, finally third land. So we do have a third land. I see that Mango does have a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Go for Throat, a Rafin identified it as a threat, having to pay one extra because of the word cost. Yeah. I really want to see what land that, that is because of the art, but I think it is... Um, Which one? The Mango one? Yes. It's the Painland, the Rakdos play. Ah, Painland. perfect. I was like, what is that heart? Yeah. <laughs> uh, very cool design there. Let's see. So Torolf here following up with Danik and this uh, wedding announcement is going to flip, creating a 1-1 one, one, and now all Torolf's creatures have plus one, plus one. Two mana and still fable. open. Mango following up with a top land and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And again, we can see the leaved token. <laughs> So looks like Mangu now is a bit more comfortable on the mm -hmm. lands, which is great because he did miss land drop when he only had two swamps. Attacking with everything. Don't forget the creatures have plus one, plus one because the wedding yeah, exactly. announcement is flipped. And casting back from the graveyard. Flashback, Vanik, Mangu going down. Being at 11 life, if our life totals are correct here, Torov gaining some life because of Danik. That I is the life link. They're correct. He's trying to decide if he wants to discard something or not. So reading Checking. here the flip side of Danik, and maybe I can put it here as well.
really thinking about it. We also know that Minguchi has the shieldred in hand, but I don't know if that will be enough. Just starting to be very nervous because who win this one will be qualified for awards. Yeah, definitely. I know both of these players dream about that world's invite. That's the goal. Yeah. Already qualified for the Pro Tour, which is great. Yes, but the, the world. Oh. Getting <laughs> brotherhood. Okay, so we have the flip side of Danik showing now. So I think what is happening is that Torolf is trying to bring back the ability This is why it's so lucky for us to have a judge dedicated for the table because it's And once so again, I just want to have the card uh, showcased here for everyone to see. Yeah, of course. I think the card was exiled. Well, no, because when when they came back the second part of the text said when it would put in the grave from anywhere, exile it instead. Yeah, and they so. didn't exile it. We have Talia here making Menguchi spells cost one more now. And the saga is flipping. So and now we have a choo choo kiki jiki on the board. I think we can take this Danik now out of... Oh, and Shieldred. Shieldred. Okay, that's a great card. Um, he had that for a, Let's a see bit. if Thoroth has an answer on the upkeep before drawing to make sure... I see a go for trope, mm -hmm. so I think we might see a go for trope upkeep before drop. Seven life point for uh, Minguchi, it's very, very low right now. Not with shoulder on board, but we know that he can remove, so... Yeah. And of course. Go for Throat, costing one more because of Talia. And here, um, Thorov just attacking because Mengu was at seven life. Here, yeah. going down three life now. Is getting really, really low. Oh, but we see an invoke despair on the other side. Mm -hmm. And he decided to kill yeah, himself let's, with the pain land. <laughs> let's get to another one. So actually, when um, Thoralf was choosing to bring this deck alongside other teammates, he was made to prey on these mm -hmm. Grixis decks. So supposedly there are some advantage there. And I know it was well prepared against it because Grixis yeah. is the most played deck yesterday and today. And Thoralf knew that and brought these Esper Legends fine tuned to beat this Grixis mid range deck. It's a good option. And I don't know if we have, we can have the sideboard for this table. When you have Danik and Atal Atalia attacking you with a plus one, plus one yeah. from the flip side of wedding announcement, <laughs> go down to one, it's like, okay, GG, let's go to another game. And if we could have the player's sideboard here showing, that would be great. Uh, this is an open deck list tournament. Obviously, we are in the top four semifinals of day two. The player that wins this game today, this match, is going to be getting an invitation for the World Championship. And here we have the Mengucci sideboard. So um, 
the thing that I see is this disdainful stroke. But actually, against uh, Torolf's deck, the only thing mm -hmm. that stroke can get is shielded because all these threats, wedding announcement, um, Rafine, they are three mana. Um, you have soul transfer, exactly. you have cut down. So Annoying Affliction is a card that actually is really good because it does exile. Mm -hmm. uh, exile creature with mana cost three or less. In this case, you can exile Rafine, you can exile the Nick, making sure he doesn't come back from the grave. Even Razor Light Transmogant, we know this card has played a lot and usually against Grixis, it only costs two mana to return from the grave yep. because Grixis players do run a lot of non-basics. So we are taking here a look at Torov's list. As I said, we have here uh, sideboard three Lauren of the third pot. This card has to be mentioned because it, it's been amazing against Fable of the Mirror mm -hmm. Breaker, right? Fable we'll of the Mirror it. Breaker is one of the cards that gives a lot of advantage to the Grixis player. Lauren, when enters the battlefield, Destroys target enchantment or artifact. And there are so many also. And here we have the strokes, which are great because they can yep. counter shield red, invoke despair. But do you want to take inside the disdainful stroke, even if you have um, Dahlia? So the thing is that uh, Mango cannot avoid casting spells, right? Because he, he his list has a lot of non-creature spells. <laughs> He has access to a lot of cutdowns, especially post sideboard. These cutdowns are able to take care of Talia. So the goal for Mengu in this one is to be able to remove Talia with cutdown. Cutdown also taking care of Rafine if it is uh, previous to combat. There is things in standard that punish players for playing non-basic lands, and we see that um, Torolf is taking advantage of that in the deck. Yeah, also the Furnish. The Furnish is one that plays a lot in Mono Red, and we also have this artifact that gets wrecked from the graveyard and costs only two if your opponent has four or more non-basic lands. This card is great. It comes back as a 4-2 that cannot block, and... Just with two mana, having access to a 4-2 entering the battlefield in the end of your opponent's turn, um, it's, it's really good. We are now in game two. Let's see what they decide to do if mull or play. But, yeah, mull or keep. We have here our players shuffling word to mention Andrea Mengucci now on the top on the on the play and uh, being able to cast cut down Torof deck is prepared against these Grixis with a yeah. lot of sideboard answers. As we saw, Mengucci has kind of awkward sideboards, like the mm -hmm. stroke that uh, seems good when you th when you look at it at first, but then you realize that it's actually not good against the Esper Legend <laughs> deck, right? And the Transmog Generant is just very, very good against Grixis. see their hands both of these players are playing for worlds the player Yay. that wins this game goes to the finals the finalists get an invite keep, for keep. the world championship both of them keep mango starts with a cycle top land they are already in the port with an invitation for the pro tour everybody in the top eight top eight has Talia, yeah. and this is uh, Torov's team dream. If he can follow up with a turn three Rafine, mm -hmm. that's great. Now Mengu does have a lot of answers with two mana that now cost three because of Talia. Yeah, but he has three mana, so he can do that something. Go for throat, a braid, all of that is possible. Uh, although it cannot target Rafine because Rafine mm -hmm. also has the ward one. So if you want to target Rafine, you have to pay two more: one for the ward, one for Talia. And he's removed the Talia. 
So right now he has only to deal with the Rafin. The problem with the Rafin is that he will start Conniv. Yeah, so conniving here is uh, really good for Toroth, being mm -hmm. able to find the key cards in the deck. And also, as we talked before, being able to discard cards like Danik or the um, cards that come back from the graveyard yep. is really important. The trans Transmogenerant. I just hope I'm saying the name of the card correctly, but cards that come back from the grave works really well when you have abilities to discard. Uh, not only that, you also have Takanuma that then allows you to return. One of the key cards of the Esper Legend decks are the Channel Lands, yeah. because they are not affected by Talia's uh, Ability, plus yeah. one cost, because they are abilities, not spells, and you have Takanuma that returns something from the grave, a creature, you have exactly. Otawara, and you have a Ganju. All of these creatures get a reduction cost from the Legends, so they work amazing in this deck. And she As ordered. we say this, we have here Rafin attacking Shieldra is on the battlefield, so we are going to gain two life. Oh, he also has another one in hand. Discard Ataya and put a counter. Plus one, plus one counter. This is a great way because, for example, if you have two Talias, you do not need the second one. They yeah. are legendary, so yeah, this course. conniving really helps this deck finding um, the perfect answers and getting rid of those, those double legends. Attacking with the corpse. We see that Mengu does have a lot of interaction in end. Yeah, he also has a shield. But I think that right now probably he won't be the better option. Attacking with Rafin, conniving, and land. No, plus one, plus one. So with Rafin, when you discard um, land, you don't get a counter. If you discard a non land, you do get a counter. Playing the Nick here. Another way, great way to do things is when you are able to put the Nick in the grave, yeah, and then you get to, f to flashback it, but you get a counter from the Kanaev because it is a non-land. Here attacking with Corpse Appraiser, Menguchi, Another playing land. land. We see Children in Ant, a land, and I don't know what the third card is. There it is, Reckon Bank Buster. Oh, it's a Make Disappear. Here we have another um, shielded, and that yeah. has to feel bad for Mangu. Mangu does have a make disappear, but it will have to sacrifice yeah. something to be able to... And do you want to really sacrifice something? Yeah, you can do that. If you know that you have already... You have to, and the thing is that you cannot hand. crew your bank buster because... Yeah, exactly, but you can use it for drawing cards and try to find something. The problem is that there is a counter in Torel's hand that we know. I'm not sure if it's a wending announcement. Yeah, it was discarded. Another token plus one plus one on the Raffine. And Shielded First on Mango side. He has another one in hand. <laughs> and that was a fast, <laughs> disdainful stroke <laughs> if I ever saw one. <laughs> Drawing a card with Bank Buster. We see that Torov is access to Danik in the graveyard. That mm -hmm. can come back. Also because... His opponent, Menguchi, is completely tap out, so... There it is, flipping the Nick. It is now a 3-2 flyer and attacking with Rafin. So here we have the other side of the Nick, Pio's Apparition. 3-2, whenever one or more creature's cards are put into graveyard from anywhere, you investigate.
let us know who are you rooting for in the comments. We always love to see what we chat has to say Don't to agree. loved agree. players of the community. Totally agree. And now let's see how he's what he's thinking, Mangucci, what he can do. He has a fable, he has a corpse, he has a shoulder in hand. First of all, a corpse. Then he can exile a creature. And of course, the only one that can come back from the graveyard. Land and corpse in graveyards. <laughs> a lot of cheering for Mengu. A lot of cheer for Toroth, I see as well. Both of players are beloved members of the community. Yeah. I, I, I know both of these players. They are really lovely people. Exactly. They are amazing. And I'm sure that it's going to be a bittersweet feeling for whoever wins and whoever loses. Oh, and there it is, the Exile card, Anointed. Yeah. A great new addiction for from Phyrexia for sideboard card, being able to exile a creature with mana cost three or less. Let's see what's happening. So, for those of you asking if Toffel missed a clue, I'm going to put the card here for you to see. Meanwhile, double wedding announcement on the board for Toralf. Yeah, double wedding <laughs> announcement. This is going to get crazy because now if Mengu, even if he does have something like an Invoke the Spare... Yeah, he has to choose just one. And the other one will survive. This is definitely going to be a really tough comeback here from Andrea Mengucci being at 6 life. Toroth at 11, but with two wedding announcements, the Nick flipped and two 1-1 oh, one, one tokens. And the Fable down on the board for Mengucci. For those of you asking, because of flight timings, we couldn't cover both of the yeah, matches. Exactly. But if this match does end before the other semifinals, we will go and cover that one. Yeah, ideally, we like to cover both full, but it depends on the players. And you know how these events go, and some yes. players have flights Flight, to catch. Exactly. And that's total, to totally valid. When we can, we try to make a coverage for both games, but it depends on them. We love to bring the most content that we can. We have Danik attacking here. He does fly, so... Mengu at 6. He cannot block, for sure. So here, if Mengu does draw a card with Bank Buster, only has one counter left, he will be able to make a treasure token and create a 1-1 one -one pilot. Now it's very, very difficult for him, though. So let's see what Mengu gets here from the Bank Buster, and it looks like it's Fable of the Mirror Breaker. A braid end of turn using the treasure that was created by the Bank Buster. And I think a plaza was used to protect the Denik, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> now the bird is starting to be difficult to keep up on stream <laughs> for space reason. Yeah. Plaza being such a great card. Oh, yeah. Discarded the Fable. I think that's an Invoke the Spare. I might be wrong. Might be a land. Really hard to tell yeah. as Mango is shuffling all <laughs> the cards. I see a Shielder, that's for sure. We can understand why they are pretty nervous. Because... Now he's zero one. If he want to go to the words, he have to try his best for the game. For oh, going uh, to game three. Harvester here making a blood token. Harvest actually being great. 
especially if you do have the reflection of Hikijiki to being able to start copying it. But here, okay. the thing is that Mengu is at three and that Danik flies. So definitely Mengu needs a way to deal with it. Yeah. And a way now. So attacking for two, creating a treasure token. It could be too late, maybe. We'll see. Zoroth at 11 life here. Just taking the damage. Yeah, I don't think it's a big problem for him. And now we have a shield red on. The thing about shield red is that when Mengu is at three, he does yeah. have a blood token. So that is bouncing. Oh back. no, he doesn't even have a blood token anymore that I'm yeah. seeing. So. Oh, he did have. It was just Iden. So here we are going to have some life gain before shield red get bounced by Otawara. Another great card that this Esper Legend deck has. As you saw, the legendaries make Otawara cheaper and it also doesn't count as a spell because it is a channel ability. So it goes around for things like counter spells. It cannot be countered. And I probably he can still block because he cannot block the flying creature for sure, the Danik, but he can block all the tokens. One, two, three. No, just three. He can block three of them. But Toralf decided that he prefer another, another wedding one. announcement. Whoa, this is crazy. Third wedding announcement being played here by Toralf. And two is flipping up. That means that this one, one token now are three, three token. That is scary. But Toralf is also at nine, so... I see a cut down on Mengu's side, unfortunately not being able to deal with the tokens as there are now three trees. What a game of magic we are here. For those of you asking, what happened was that Toralf Otawara, which is bouncing the shield red. In response, Mengu cracked a blood token, discarding drawing, gaining two life from shield red. And here, game and Toralf is going for the world championship oh. beating andrea <laughs> mengucci we are going for table number one but great games both of these players are great magic players i actually when uh the top eight announcement was made i i came to Torof and was like i feel like today might be your day because this deck is insane and it just preys on Grixie is so well. So now we are going to watch. Guess what? Surprise, surprise. Esper Legends versus... I'm not sure about it because I see there are 0-2 if it's correct. But I'm not sure it's that if that is correct. Maybe they are updating here the information. Our technical team needs some minutes to be able to... Yeah, Looks like right. they are going to a and new game. this one is another Esper Legend against Grixie's midrange. Again. But... Two different players, so maybe two different play styles. Let's see. What are they to be watching a Magic Paper Yay. live stream? <laughs> this is history in the making. Astoralp is now officially getting an invitation for the World Championship, Yay. and it truly deserves it. If you don't know, Torov has been making content for Card Market for a long time. Yeah. He is one of the beloved members of the community. Pro player has been playing for a long time. Uh, one of the... And he's such a nice person. Yeah, definitely a very fun person to hang out. And he just studies so much about magic. Yeah. So many articles written by Torov. He's been able to help a lot of people in the community. And he's so good that finally he's getting his break into the World Championship. Well-deserved. And right now they have updated. We have one win for Mi Michael in Michael, probably with Grixis midrange. And zero win for Nico. So we are in game two. So here we are kind of watching the opposite, exactly. uh, where Greek's mid-range is getting the advantage. I, I think the game that we didn't cast, that Will casted on the top eight, Gabriel mm -hmm. Nassif was playing Grixis, uh, was playing Legends and actually lost against Grixis. I have someone informing that Torov has already played in the world. That is great information. 
Um, yeah. So making a comeback. 